Hello, I'm Todd Spatafor, and this is another Spatacularly Thing. Today we are looking at the Blues Wireless Hat, called the Note Card. The Note Card is a prepaid cellular system on module. It has a standard M.2 connector that connects to one of several note carriers. These carriers connect to popular single board computers or microcontrollers. The note carrier that I'm using here is the one that connects to the Raspberry Pi. As I said, it is prepaid, so there is no contract. Instead, for the $50 you pay for the device, you get 500 megabytes of data. If you run out of data, you can just pay for more. With a low-powered cellular device, the sky's the limit with what you can do. We are going to demonstrate the functionality of the device by setting up a system that saves the temperature to the cloud. It's a bit of a Hello World app, but it'll give you an idea of what is possible with this device. To do this, we will use the built-in thermometer on the system on module. We will take this information and send it to an Azure function that will then store in an Azure table. So I have the Blues Wireless note card, the Raspberry Pi note carrier, and a Raspberry Pi 4. They fit together real easily, and the note carrier has a GPIO pass-through so you can connect anything you need to it. The software is really interesting. The note card is a JSON-in, JSON-out interface. The marketing says that with just two lines of code, you are up and running. That's if you're using Python, and it is just that easy in Python. Now before we look at the code, let's make sure we know what we're going to do. First, we're going to get the temperature data from the note card. Then we send this data to the Notub.io site. Notub.io forwards the data to our Azure function using standard HTTP POST. And finally, the Azure function stores the data in an Azure table. Let's look a little closer. To get the temperature data, we make a JSON call with the name of rec and a value of card temp. This will return the temperature value and a calibration. Then we send the data to Notab.io. We sync the calls with a value of rec, excuse me, with a name of rec and a value of hub sync. And that's really all there is to sending the data to the cloud. Notab.io syncs this data with Azure with a route. This sends the data from NoteHub to Azure, to an Azure function, and an Azure function just stores the data. Let's look a little closer at all of this. First, let's look at the Python code. This is the main method. First, we set up a note card. We set up a serial port that we then open on the note card. We do a simple transaction test just to make sure that the card is working, and we set up the card for use. The important part here is first we get the data. This is what we talked about just now. We get the data from the card. Let's look at what this function says. Get data takes the card, and here's our rec card temp. We do a card transaction on that rec, and we get a response, which we return to data. Then we send the data of the card, the temperature, and the calibration. So send data is simply a function that takes the card, the temperature, and a calibration, creates this request here, this request JSON, and then it does its own transaction on that request. It returns a response, which we then just print to the screen. Finally, we sync the data with the cloud. Hub sync. And that's really all there is to it. Let's give it a try. So here we have this transaction test right here. Then we set up the card which results in this empty bracket here. We get the data, we send the data, which is this total one here, and then we sync the data, which is this empty JSON. Now, if we look at the Azure storage table, you can see here that we have a partition key of HTTP, a row key, a timestamp, the temperature of 30.125, and a calibration of 3. This temperature and calibration is the data that we sent to the function. You saw the route that we created in NoteHub.io. The route sends the data that it collects from the note card to an Azure function. Let's look at that Azure function next. This is the C-sharp code for our Azure function. 
We have two helper classes, one for row data, which you can see has partition key, row key, temperature, and calibration. And we have one for temp data, which is just value and calibration. Next, if we look at the function itself, the function name is blues trigger temp, and it returns a table to blues YouTube data. And if we look back at our Azure storage, you can see that we have a blues YouTube data with a partition key, row key, a temp timestamp, temperature, and calibration. This function triggers on an HTTP post, and we get a request. And that request has a body, which we open a stream reader to read the entire body. Then we deserialize the JSON into a temp data object called data. We log some information, then we create a new row data object, and we place that into the table. The partition key is always HTTP for this function. We create a new GUID, and we set the temperature and calibration information. And that's all there is to it. It creates a JSON object that it sends to NoteHub.io. NoteHub.io takes that data and forwards it on to this Azure function. The Azure function then stores it in this table. But that's not quite enough for me. I like to do things in .NET. So the first thing that I did, I rewrote the Python helper class in .NET. Here we have a note card class with functions of reset and transaction. Very straightforward. Now let's look at our program. And our program does basically the same thing that we did before. First we do a card status to make sure that everything is working. Then, and I put this inside of a loop so we can get more than one bit of data, we get the card temperature into a temp response. Then we create a request that's body is that temp response. Temp response is just a value and a calibration. And I've overridden to string so that we could have some logging capabilities as well. Then we do the serialization. We do a transaction on that request. And we do a transaction on hub sync. So this is, if you think about it, what we what we were talking about earlier. This is step one, then this is step two. Send the data to the cloud. Then we sleep for 30 seconds and repeat 20 times. So over the course of 10 minutes, we should have 20 bits of data. Let's go ahead and run this and see how it works. So it got the data, it generated a JSON object, and it sent that data to the cloud, which you can see here. Now, if we go back to our Azure Storage Explorer and hit refresh, you will see our new data, 31.25, with a calibration of negative three. And over the course of the next 10 minutes, I will get 19 more data points. That's all there is to it. It's fairly straightforward. As I said, with a cellular device on top of your Raspberry Pi, any IoT idea that you have can come to light. Thank you for watching. This has been another spectacular thing. Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button.